there, I'm Jen Jarnigan, and I'm going to be talking about some quick ways you can build community in the middle school Latin classroom. One of the most important things that we can do when setting up kind of our classroom to run smoothly is to make sure that we explain the why behind our policies and our ideas to students. Um, developmentally, students are at an age where they're very concerned with justice and fairness. They're also starting to understand concepts like power and influence. Um, and they're also at a point in their lives where even though they understand these ideas, they don't have a lot of individual power, right? They can't drive themselves around. They don't have as much say in what they do or where they go, right? They're very much beholden to the adults in their lives. Um, and if we can sort of take, take hold of that idea um, it's a really good way that we can build relationships with students and help them feel like we kind of understand them and sort of where they're at. Um, I think it's really important whenever we are creating our classroom culture that we explain to students kind of how we want the room to run, what type of energy we want, what our policies are, explain why those are our policies, and then asking students if there's anything else they would add. Um, another great way to do it if you want to start school this way is ask them to think about kind of the best class they've ever had and then really start thinking about well what was it that made it a great class and then you can draw from that okay what are the policies we should have here to help it you know to help our class be similar to, to that great class experience that you had right um, it's also really helpful when it comes to policies around discipline, if they understand why those are your policies, and then giving them a chance to say, you know, what do you all need from me as the teacher to help make sure that the class can go smoothly? Uh, even if they don't have any suggestions, knowing that you're an adult who wants to hear from them can make a world of difference. Um, the next one is to help students connect cause and effect, right? That is one of the last parts of our brain to develop, um, and if those of you who have taught middle school, you are very well aware of the fact that if you ask a student, why did you just do that? Most of the time, they don't have an answer for you. Um, that's just not where they're at developmentally. But they are starting to grasp the world around them. They're starting to understand the way that current, impact, current events will impact the future. They're not really wanting to just take things at face value anymore. They want to probe deeper. Um, but they don't really fully understand it yet, right? So a lot of a lot of the chaos in middle school comes from the, these nascent um, these nascent understandings that they haven't really developed yet and that they can't articulate yet. So anything that we can do to help students really surface that idea of cause and effect, I'm a big fan of explaining to them that you get what you want from a situation, right? So. Even if, let's say, they're, they're the only kid from their friend group who decided to take Latin, I can understand that they might be bummed. I'm, I'd be bummed if I was in a class with a, a lot of my friends. But I explain to students that whether this is a great class or not is entirely up to them. And if they want to come in with an attitude of, these are not my people, so I don't care, it's probably not going to be a fun class. But if they come in with the idea that we're going we're gonna to meet each other where we are, we're going to support each other, we're going to have fun together, this is going to become the type of class you look forward to every day, right? So helping students sort of link their thought processes and their attitude to class with what type of behavior will really lead to it being fun. Um, they're very much at an age where they think everyone is looking at them all the time. And so... They want to fit in. They want to be just like everyone else. But they also want to express their individuality, right? That's another one of the things that makes middle school so hard. These are very different ideas that are pulling on them. So anything we can do to help them understand that the way that we show up for each other will help it be more fun can really kind of help them get over that. Um, using low-stakes games is another great way to build community. I'm not a big fan of games that where you win extra credit or you win prizes. I think that tends to foster a little bit more of an unhealthy competition or students will start to be really, they might say something really ugly if they have a student on their team who isn't very strong, um, for example. But if they're very low stakes, if everything is just sort of for bragging rights and to have fun, I find that that tends to create more of a communal type of game approach 
Keith Toda's blog, Totally Comprehensible Latin, has lots of different games and activities that are very easy to make into little games um, that I find students really enjoy. Similarly, some people call this clock buddies or clock partners. The idea that you have students sign up like at one o'clock, their partner would be so-and-so. At two o'clock, they would have a different partner. Three o'clock would have a different partner. And it, that way you're not always having kids partner up with the exact same one or two people. Um, I use the first five emperors. So they have an Augustus partner, Tiberius partner, you know, Claudius, Caligula, Nero. Um, the Augustus one is basically the, the closest friends tend to be the ones who sign up for that. So I'll use that partnering. If it's something that they can kind of be silly with, it's something that's really not meant to be too much focus, or that is something just done fast. I tend to use like a Nero partner because by the time you've gone through four other people and you're on your fifth partner in the class, this probably isn't someone that you are very close with, right? So I find that that's a really good one if you really want kids to work together. It kind of pushes them to make um, some friendships with some new people, which can be nice. Or if you want them to kind of focus a little bit more and be less inclined to chit-chatting with their friend, which is going to be more likely to happen with that first partner. Um, and then finally, give students choice. The more choices students have, the more say they have, the more they'll feel like they have agency, the more they'll feel like you're respecting their individuality. And it really helps them become more motivated and more invested. Whether the choice be something like, you know, write out, a translation of this paragraph or draw it, right? Tell me what happens in a drawing, whether it be, you know, work on this on your own or with a partner, right? That, those are very simple ways to do choice. I'm actually a big fan of having us look at our testing calendar all together and then students, we all process together, okay, based on when you have other homework and assignments next week, when, when should we do our Latin quiz or our Latin test, right? That helps sort of, again, that helps build those cause and effect kind of skills and help students articulate those things and helps them advocate for themselves. It's also a really great way to give students a sense of choice. And the more we can do that, the more we can acknowledge their agency at a time in life when that's really what they, what they want and need but don't know how to express for themselves, the better we can, we can help them navigate the sort of messy, frenzied time that is middle school. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day.